What gives us our sense of balance? This short video will give you the anatomy of the balance system, how it can go wrong, and how you can fix it. This is not meant to be medical advice in any way. If you're having these types of problems, please go see a physician and get properly diagnosed. First, I'd like to define what balance is. Balance is a sense of feeling steady. Balance is when you feel stable while you're trying to move around. So dizziness is whenever you feel that you're about to fall or you feel that when you move that there's extra movement in another direction. Now, vertigo is definitely a type of dizziness. Vertigo is when you feel that the world is moving in one direction or many directions, or you feel that you're moving in one direction or many directions. So a lot of people do use these three words interchangeably, balance, dizziness, and vertigo. And I'm not disagreeing that there may be more than one definition of these words, but when you're talking to patients who have these types of problems or when you're talking to doctors, it is important to distinguish between dizziness, vertigo, and just a balance problem. So when someone talks about balance, really what they're talking about is how their brain, how they perceive their balance. We all know if we're balanced or not balanced, but what really happens in the body to tell us that we're balanced, that we're steady, that we're stable. So there's a lot of different parts of the body that give us that information. There's the inner ear, the, our hearing, our eyes, with our vision. There are skin receptors that tell us if we're touching the ground, it tells us how much pressure there is. There's also mechanoreceptors in all of our joints that tell our brain if our joint is open or closed and kind of uh, gives us a sense of, of where all of our joints are in space. Then there's also the cochlea, the brain stem, the different regions of the brain, such as the parietal lobe and occipital lobes. All of these regions, all of these different parts, the, the parts outside of the central nervous system, the, in the skin and in the ear, and then the parts inside, the brain, the brain stem, the cerebellum, all of these work together to, to take all of this information from all these different sensors and tell our brain where we are in space. So that pathway is actually rather complicated and there really are many different components of it. Even within the brain, there are many different areas within the brain that proprioception is sort of imagined and conceived and then sent to the parts of the brain that, that are responsible for planning movement, coordinating movement and assessing if movement is happening. I've learned from talking to people about balance and dizziness and vertigo that a lot of the public has an idea that 100% of vertigo is caused from a dysfunction of the inner ear organ called the cochlea. Now the cochlea is a very important part of the balance system. It looks kind of like a, a snail and it's in our ear just on the inside of where hearing is, is, is uh, received. And what the cochlea does is it has these three uh, circular canals and there's fluid in the canals and there's, a, there's these hair cells that line the edges of the canal. If you look at it, it kind of reminds me of uh, seaweed in, in the water. So when the water moves in, in one direction, the seaweed will move in that direction. Well, that's what the hair cells in the cochlea do. When you move to the right, one of the semicircular canals, which is oriented right or left, the fluid in that, in that part of the cochlea will move. And as it moves, the hair in that part of the cochlea moves and tells our brain that we're moving to the right or if you're moving to the left, forward or backward. It also tells us how quickly something is happening. So it tells us that sense of acceleration and deacceleration. So it's definitely a very, very important organ. Um, but 
people can have balance and a sense of balance without this organ. We know that. Some people have to have this organ chemically removed because they're having problems with it or surgically removed. Um, but also people are born with this organ not working at all, just like people are born deaf or people are born blind. And yet those people who don't have a cochlea or functioning one, they can still balance. And in, in fact, people that, that have to have it removed, they have to relearn how to find their balance the same way someone who isn't blind and then becomes blind has to learn how to live without their sight or live without hearing. You can definitely compensate for these things. In fact, I've worked with, with both um, the blind and the deaf, and I can tell you that once someone's used to that, it's very hard to even know that, that, that they have that problem. I've worked with people for a while that were deaf and never realized they, they really couldn't hear me. They were sight reading or work with people that are blind that balance really, really well and have seemingly no trouble with, with moving around and yet they can't see. So the cochlea is the same thing. You can have the cochlea not working at all and be able to balance. Really the problem with the cochlea is when it's giving the wrong information all the time. And so a number of different things can cause that, much more than what this video can talk about. But basically, the, those nerves, those hair cells, for different reasons, get the wrong information. And when they get the wrong information, they tell your brain that you're moving when you're not moving. And so that causes uh, vertigo and a sense that the room is spinning or that they're moving when they're really not. Studies on uh, dizziness have found that about 20% of the time when someone is dizzy, that they actually have something wrong with the cochlea. Um, most common problem that you hear about with the cochlea is a thing called BPV, um, which basically means that there's little crystals of, that build up in that fluid over time, and those crystals are pressing on the hair cells and causing the person to, to be dizzy. So that accounts, uh, cochlear problems account for about 20% of, of dizziness. That means that about 80% of the time, it's something else. So when we were talking about all the different components of the balanced pathway, it can really be any one of those components that goes wrong or has a problem that causes someone to have dizziness or causes someone to have vertigo. One thing that people often overlook when it comes to dizziness and even vertigo is anxiety. Mood, can definitely affect your balance. If you've ever been on a very, very uh, tall ladder and you don't particularly like to be up on a ladder, which I think is a lot of us, and you feel dizzy or you feel a sense that you're going to fall, you've experienced this. Um, anxiety can easily cause dizziness in a lot of people. We might call it fear of falling and it's, it's something that we know causes people to fall because when they're anxious about falling, they tend to be very stiff. They tend not to use their normal movement patterns and it actually makes someone much more likely to fall. But mood is a huge factor in, uh, in dizziness. And it's something that even in the literature, you don't see mentioned a lot, but I can tell you from experience that a lot of people that are afraid of falling um, they're telling you that they're dizzy because of, because of the fear. Um, but there's definitely other things that can cause people to be dizzy and, and have vertigo. Um, another big uh, area is strokes and, and brain injury. So anytime the regions of the brain that are responsible for proprioception and, and vestibular control are damaged, then it's definitely possible to experience dizziness. In fact, one of the most common symptoms of a stroke initially is dizziness. And when someone goes in the emergency room and they're saying, you know, I'm really dizzy, um, I think it's my inner ear, and then the doctors do a CT scan and they say, well, actually, you know, it's, it's a stroke, that's very common. Um, most people who have strokes experience dizziness. Um, but there definitely are other things too. Diseases um, can cause people to have dizziness. Um, Parkinson's, for instance, for instance, because of how it affects the cerebellum and, and it interferes with the cerebellum's 
function of taking all of the information from our ear and our cochlea and our and our body and putting it together and sending it to the brain because that doesn't work a lot of people with um, parkinson's and, and many different types of neurological diseases also have dizziness uh, and and or vertigo um, and we've already talked about the cochlea that's definitely a big one um, people that have hearing loss um, also can experience uh, dizziness Sometimes it can be related because the hearing loss is causing is caused by a problem that's also affecting the cochlea. It could be a sinus infection or labyrinthitis. Um, but it but also just losing your hearing, even if your cochlea is perfectly intact, we know that can affect people's ability to locate themselves in a room. Just like uh, bats, humans do use a very simple form of echolocation, we all do that, especially in a dark room. If you don't have your vision and you're walking through a room, you actually do listen to sounds in the room and how they echo. And that tells us a little bit about where things are in the room that we're in, even though we can't see. So um, what can be done about all of this? We've talked about what the balance system is, how it's a pathway, um, the different components of it, and how all those components work together to give you your sense of stability when you're moving. But what can be done to fix it when things go wrong? Well, this is a pretty complicated question. First of all, if someone's having a specific problem, for instance, if they're having that problem with their cochlea where there's crystals building up in that fluid and, and they're getting uh, vertigo because of that, there's definitely exercises that can be done. Um, this is something I highly recommend that you see a doctor about first because the internet is just not the best place to learn how to fix uh, medical problems. And my experience with vertigo and dizziness is it's definitely something that misleads a lot of people. You really can't look up your specific symptoms on the internet and know that what you're seeing is a real diagnosis of, of what's wrong with you. A human being, a, a doctor, is really the best person to do that. Um, once the doctor takes a look at you and can rule out all these other things and say, oh yeah, this is definitely your, your inner ear, then there really are good exercises. There's an Epley's maneuver and, and some take-home exercises that you can do, not only to get it under control, but also to prevent it. Um, but the point here is that if you're having something specifically that's causing vertigo and dizziness, whether it's a chemical or, a, or a, a drug interaction or something else, you definitely need to get that fixed. Um, and this video is not gonna tell you how to fix it. But what I can tell you is, once you get that fixed, depending on how long you've had the problem, most likely your balance is still affected. Why? Because you haven't been active because of the balance problem, because of the dizziness, because of the vertigo, you've most likely not been as active, you've not been doing your normal activities, you haven't been challenging yourself. And what we know is that when people are stationary and immobile for a long period of time, they actually lose their ability to balance. So not being able to have good balance, that results in someone saying, yeah, I, I still feel dizzy. And so that's frustrating for doctors and physical therapists sometimes because we might be able to fix the BPV. We might be able to fix that, that diz, the vertigo the person's getting and their dizziness, but the person's still saying they're dizzy when they're walking around, but it's different now. It's not caused by changes in position. Now their dizziness is just every time they challenge their balance, they feel dizzy. They're feeling dizzy and they're saying that because they've actually got decreased balance. So... The solution really for anyone, whether they've had a stroke or they have Parkinson's or they have you know, chronic uh, cochlear problems and they just can't get it fixed, the solution really is to improve your balance because someone that has better balance in different situations isn't gonna feel like they're going to fall. Now, it's true, if you're constantly getting vertigo, no matter what you do, that is a very debilitating situation and I feel for you. And unfortunately, um, it's not always possible to fix it. And those people, they go to doctors, they go to all different types of people to try to help them. And sometimes, you know, it, it can be fixed through diff different methods, surgeries, medicine, uh, therapy. But 
I'm really talking about the vast majority of people that just have dizziness. And a lot of them feel dizzy only when they're standing up, only when they're challenging their balance. Maybe they're trying to stand on one leg or walk on soft grass. For those people, um, the real solution is to actually just make their balance better. And you can do that through balance challenging activities. And that's what my whole channel is about, is to try to teach people how they can challenge their balance to improve their balance. Um, but the bottom line is, there are a lot of things that can cause people to be dizzy, a lot of things that can cause vertigo. A lot of it is treatable. The doctor is the best person to start with, um, but once you, once you get the initial problem fixed, fixing your balance is, is only possible through doing balance challenging activities, but it's definitely something that most people can fully recover from.